feeding each other is foundational to many sorts of friendships. Uh, it's central to um, migratory songbird courtship. It's central to parent-child relationships. It's central to human courtship. It's central to just all sorts of relationships. And I, I think about that in terms often of feeding non-humans. And what does that mean about our relationship? What, what are we feeling for each other as we, as we do it? So when you put out bird seed or put out a hummingbird feeder or put out uh, food for squirrels, or it doesn't matter what, what sort of creature you're feeding, how does it perceive, how do those creatures perceive you? Do they perceive you as someone who is feeding them because you like them and because you are trying to form a friendship of some sort with them? Or does it perceive you like a vending machine? Does it perceive you like a cargo cult where you know supplies are delivered and then they think that if they if they you know if they're squirrels and they stand by your window and stamp their feet that that's going to make the food appear or are they standing out there saying hey i'm hungry are they talking to you or are they is it a cargo cult is it magical thinking and I think that there are a couple of answers to this, neither of which really satisfy me. One answer would be from the mechanistic perspective that no, there's no relationship because from a purely mechanistic perspective, there really aren't relationships. There's, there's I'm hungry. There's sort of Pavlovian response. I'm hungry and I found that if I go up to the window and stamp my tiny feet that the person brings out some peanuts for me. And so it's cause and effect, but not relationship. And on the other perspective, I, I've had people, when I ask questions like this, they go, Derek, how could you even ask? Because you know the animals are in relationship with you because this sort of animistic perspective of, of no, they love you and, and they just happen to be, you know, stamping their feet because, I don't know, but, but, but there, there are these two sort of opposite perspectives of no, absolutely, there's no relationship or yes, there is a relationship. And in both cases, like, how dare you ask? But what makes me think about this really, or where this leads me is I think it's more complex in that when I think about humans and our relationship, especially to wild food, like if you think about a berry patch or you think about some place where you go mushroom picking, how do you perceive that? Do you perceive basically the berry patch as a vending machine that, oh, if I show up at a certain time, berries will be there. Berries are going to be there from July 1st to August 1st. And The same with the mushroom patch that, and there's a difference between the mushroom patch and the berry patch I'll get to in a second. But the point I'm getting at is that even I, who really falls way over on the animus side, when I go to pick a thimbleberry and eat it, I don't often think, oh, this thimbleberry plant wants to be my friend. It's feeding me. I think, oh, the thimbleberries have come on. It's time to eat them. And the other thing I think, and this has to do with the difference between, between berries and, and mushroom patches, is that um, the berries, it's a bit more complicated too, because the berries are not really acting altruistically. The berries are trying to get you to eat them. They're kind of manipulating you. They want you to eat them so that you can poop out their seeds somewhere else in a nice little bunch of fertilizer. And so the thing I do think when I eat a thimbleberry or a blackberry or a salal is mm, I am kind of violating the deal here because I'm probably going to poop inside 
in a toilet and it's not going to end up being out in the wild where it's supposed to make a new plant. And that's a difference between that and the, the, the fungi because when I pick a chanterelle, you know, the chanterelle is not, um, there's not that promise that I'm going to poop out the, the spores, I don't think. I don't think that's how chanterelle work. Anyway, the point here is that in neither case do I really think about, oh, the elderberry is trying to be my friend and that's why it's giving me this, or the, the chanterelle is trying to be my friend. So I don't, so if the squirrels or hummingbirds are not perceiving you as a friend, but a bit of a vending machine, that doesn't mean that the birds, the hummingbirds or the songbirds or the squirrels are not sentient, unless we're going to argue that I am not sentient either, because oftentimes, like I said, I don't perceive it as them wanting to be my friend. And I don't know where I'm going with this, except that I think it's really interesting to think about. And I think I want to think about it more in terms of, of perhaps the thimbleberries are wanting to have a relationship with me. 